Welcome to the CSUN video learning module on the electronic structure of atoms. My name is Simon Garrett. Electronic structure sounds complicated, but in this context, electronic is simply related to the number and location of electrons in an atom. In this video, we'll look at examples focused on figuring out where the electrons are in various atoms and ions. Before you begin, you should review your lecture notes and the textbook on electronic structure. A calculator is not necessary, but might help. A periodic table could be useful too. Here's the first question. For each of the following lists of atomic orbitals, identify the orbitals that cannot exist. 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s. 3s, 3p, 3d, 3f. 4d, 4f, 5s, 6p. 1p, 1d, 2p, 2d. Pause the video now and think about each statement. Since each of these parts is basically the same, I would write out a list of all the possible orbitals in any atom and then see which ones don't belong to the list. We're going to use numbers to specify the shell that the electrons go into and the letters to specify any subshells within that shell. The letters are, in order, S, P, D, and F. In the first shell, there is only one subshell or orbital. This is the 1S subshell. In the next shell, there are two subshells or orbitals. These are the 2S and 2P subshells. The next shell has three subshells or orbitals. These are the 3s, 3p, and 3d subshells. The next shell has four subshells, the 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f orbitals. In the next two shells, there are four subshells each. These are the 5s, 5p, 5d, and 5f orbitals, and the 6s, 6p, 6d, and 6f orbitals. Notice the pattern that I've written these down in. That will become important later. There are actually other orbitals for the fifth and sixth shell that we're not concerned with here. Don't worry. You don't need to know them for any of the questions you'll be asked in this class. Now we've written a list of all possible orbitals, we can easily answer the question. For A, all orbitals can be found in the list, so all are true atomic orbitals. For B, we can see that the 3f orbital doesn't exist. For C, all orbitals in the list can exist. But for D, we see that only the 2p appears in the list we wrote. All others cannot exist. How was that? The first question was all about getting you to remember the allowed atomic orbitals, shells, and subshells. We also wrote them in a specific way, too. This is important because it allows us to go one step further, to predict the order that the orbitals will fill with electrons. Question 2. List the orbital that comes next in terms of increasing potential energy. The orbital closest to the nucleus has the lowest potential energy and is the first one filled. The next one to be filled has a higher potential energy, and so on. These are the orbitals. 1s. 2p, 3d, 4s. Pause now and write down your answer. Again, the easiest way to solve this question is to write out the entire list of possible orbitals and the order in which they are filled. This order is also the same as the order of their potential energies, from low to high. We've already done this for the previous question, but in this version we're going to enclose each orbital in a box. See? The order is the same as before. The reason I drew boxes is because I'm going to draw an arrow across the first box from top right to bottom left corner. This is the first orbital to be filled, and so is the lowest potential energy. Another arrow, parallel to the first, crosses the 2s box. The 2s orbital is the next to be filled. I'll fill up the rest of the arrows, 
each one parallel to the previous one and going across the boxes from top right to bottom left. Notice that arrows 3 and above cross multiple boxes. We now have the order of filling. Reading arrow 1 in the direction shown, we can see that the first orbital is the 1s. The second arrow tells us the next orbital is the 2s. The third arrow tells us the next orbital to be filled is the 2p, followed by the 3s. The fourth arrow tells us next comes the 3p, then the 4s, and so on. The complete order is 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 4f, and 5d. You could memorize the entire list, but if you remember how to draw this figure, you don't need to do that. Now let's answer the question. Using the diagram, we can see the next orbital to be filled after 1s, and hence next highest in potential energy, is the 2s. After the 2p comes the 3s, as indicated by arrow 3. After the 3d comes the 4p, as indicated by arrow 5. Finally, after the 4s comes the 3d. Question 3. How many total electrons can be accommodated in the following atomic orbitals? 1s, 2p, 3d, 4d, 6f. Pause now and think about the answers. OK, this time we'll think about how many subshells of each type there are. Notice the pattern. For the orbitals s, p, d, and f, the number of orbitals is 1, 3, 5, and 7. Now all we need to remember is that each orbital can contain a maximum of two electrons. For A, the important part is the orbital letter designation. There is one s orbital, and it can contain two electrons maximum. For B, there are three p orbitals. Each can contain two electrons. The total number of electrons accommodated in any p subshell is therefore 6. For C, we can see there are 5 d subshells, and so the total number of electrons contained must be 10. Similarly, the 4d subshell can also accommodate 10 electrons. In fact, the 3d, 4d, 5d, and 6d subshells can each accommodate 10 electrons. The principal quantum number, the first number, is unimportant. Finally, the F subshell can contain up to 14 electrons maximum. Let's put our knowledge to use to figure out the electron configuration of the following atoms. Note the electron configuration, sometimes called the electronic configuration, is simply a list in order of the orbitals fully or partially filled for each atom. We'll need the periodic table for each atom because that tells us how many electrons we have to find homes for. And we'll use our filling order diagram to help us decide on the order to list the orbitals. The electron configurations we're going to deduce are helium, lithium, sodium, and calcium. Pause the video here and write down your answers. Helium has two electrons total, and the first orbital to be filled is the 1s orbital. s orbitals can accommodate two electrons, and so helium has its two electrons in the 1s orbital only. There is no need for more orbitals because we found homes for our two electrons. The electron configuration for helium is 1s2. The superscript 2 tells us two electrons are in this orbital. Lithium has three electrons, so we must fill up the 1s orbital with two electrons and have one left over. This remaining one goes in the next highest energy orbital, which according to our diagram is the 2s orbital. Hence, the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. Sodium has 11 electrons. Following the same ideas as before, we must fill the 1s orbital with two electrons 
the 2s orbital with 2 electrons, then the 2p orbital with 6 electrons. Did you remember there are 3 p orbitals? So far, that's 10 electrons. The 11th must go into the 3s orbital, and the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Lastly, using the same method, we can see that calcium, with its 20 electrons, must be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Note that the sum of all the superscripts must equal the total number of electrons in the atom or ion, 20 in this case. Question 5. Write down the electron configurations of the following ions. Na+, Mg2+, S2-, Cl-. Pause the video here and work out your answers. Note that the same method we used in the previous question works for ions too. We have to be careful to add or subtract electrons from the atom depending on the ion charge, but the ideas are the same. The sodium atom has 11 electrons, but the ion is missing one, so we have to find homes for 10 electrons only. The electron configuration is therefore 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Notice the superscripts add up to 10. The magnesium atom has 12 electrons, but the ion is missing two. That means we again have to find the homes for 10 electrons. Of course, the electron configuration must be the same as Na+, or 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. To shortcut writing all of the terms, we often abbreviate the sequence to the noble gas immediately before the atom of interest. In this case, Mg2 plus has the same electron configuration as the neon atom. So we may also write Ne in square brackets. This sulfur ion has 18 electrons. We can use the shortcut above to accommodate these and simply write Ar in square brackets. Argon also has 18 electrons. Finally, Cl- has 17 electrons. The first 10 we can write as Ne in square brackets, since this is the noble gas immediately preceding chlorine. The next 7 electrons will go into the 3s and the 3p orbitals. You could also write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5, if you want it to be complete. Final question, question 6. Write down the electron configurations of nickel and bromine. Pause here and write down your configurations. You probably wrote down the orbital filling diagram and worked these ones out like before, but there's another method. It relies on the shape of the periodic table, part of which is shown here. In this method, you need to remember which electrons are the outer or valence electrons in each part of the table. Notice that all the yellow boxes have S electrons as valence electrons, and all the green boxes have P electrons as valence electrons. The period number tells us which principal quantum number to use, 2. The only glitch is for the D electron block in the middle. To find the electron configuration of nickel, find nickel on the periodic table, then read across from top left, writing down the orbitals as you go until you reach the atom of interest. For nickel, we read across the first row, two boxes, so the first entry in our electron configuration is 1s2. The next row down, from left to right, is two 2s boxes, followed by six 2p boxes. So the next entries are 2s2, 2p6. Continuing, we find two 3s boxes, followed by six 3p boxes. On the final row, we count across two 4s boxes and then eight 3d boxes. Hence, our electron configuration ends in 3d8. Using a similar idea for bromine, we count across the 4s boxes, all 10 3d boxes, and end up counting five 4p boxes. The full configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 
3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p5. You may find this method of counting across the rows easier or faster than drawing out the orbital filling diagram each time. So let's summarize. Atomic orbitals are the places where electrons are accommodated in the atom. Atomic orbitals are specified by two quantum numbers, the first one specifying the shell and the second one the subshell. The first is an integer with values 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and the second is a letter with values S, P, D, and F. The order of the orbitals in terms of potential energy or filling is important. You must memorize it or be able to work it out from the orbital filling diagram or periodic table. Different subshells accommodate different numbers of total electrons. Any s orbital can hold two electrons. Any p orbital, six electrons. d orbitals can accommodate ten electrons, and f orbitals can accommodate up to fourteen electrons. Electron configurations describe the number and atomic orbitals associated with all the electrons in an atom or ion.